justice has not been served today. We as a devastated family have been let down by multiple agency failings and ineffectiveness. The CPS did not consult with us, as has been reported. Instead, we have been rushed, hastened and railroaded. The first meeting we had with them at our behest was Friday the 24th of November, a few short days before the pre-trial plea hearing on the 28th. For the record, they had suggested that we actually meet with them on that very morning, which we clearly thought wasn't enough time. We were presented with a fait accompli. That decision had been made to accept manslaughter charges. We were horrified. At no point during the previous five and a half months were we given any indication that this could conclude in anything other than murder. We trusted in our system, foolishly as it turns out. We do not dispute that the murderer is mentally unwell and has been for a number of years. However, the premeditated planning, the collection of lethal weapons, hiding in the shadows and that brutality of the tax are of an individual who knew exactly what he was doing. He knew entirely that it was wrong, but he did it anyway. My heart from the very beginning has gone out to the families of Grace and Barnaby. It will continue to go out to them as we all now share an anniversary every June that will never be celebrated. They are the definition of strength and unity. My, also, my heart also goes out to Wayne Burkett, Marcin Goronsky and Sharon Miller victims that have also been affected by this heinous crime. The letter of the law was once considered the most important rule to live and abide by, put upon us to make the country a fair and safer place. Now they're just a cautionary tale where the calculated, cold, brutal killing spree can be reduced down to something that falls within the same sentencing restrictions and guidelines as that of death by dangerous driving. If this man was not stopped when he was, this could have been one of the most catastrophic of ca attacks this country had ever seen. This man is a killer. Murder was the only thing he cared about, and he fulfilled this in horrific fashion on Tuesday the 13th of June last year. My family has suffered a great loss. The children who my father had a positive impression on have suffered a great loss. The city of Nottingham has suffered a great loss. The fails from the police, the CPS, the health service have resulted in the murder of my father and these two innocent students. The NHS Mental Health Trust have to be held accountable for their failures, along with the police. All we can do is hope that in due course, some sort of justice will be served. This man has made a mockery of the system, and he has got away with murder. Having heard the medical evidence which has been given in court by Professor Blackwood, Dr McSweeney and Dr Mervis, and having read the reports prepared by them for the court, together with those from Dr Shavalufa and Dr Latham, all of whom are approved by the Secretary of State under Section 12.2 of the Mental Health Act 1983, I am satisfied that you are suffering from a mental disorder, namely paranoid schizophrenia. This disorder is of a nature which makes it appropriate for you to be detained in a hospital for medical treatment. And appropriate medical treatment is available for you at Ashworth Secure Hospital. I am of the opinion that because of all the circumstances of your case, including the nature of the offences to which you pleaded guilty and the history of mental illness, and having considered all the other available ways in which I might deal with you, the most suitable method of dealing with your case is by making an order under Section 37 of the Mental Health Act 1983. I therefore make an order under all six counts of the indictment that you will be readmitted to and detained at Ashworth High Security Hospital. I've also considered whether this order should be subject to special restrictions, which are specified in Section 41 of the Act. In the light of the medical evidence which I have identified, I am satisfied that because of the nature of your offence, and also having regard to your past, including your history of mental illness, and to the risk that you will commit further offences if you're not detained, it's necessary to protect the public from <coughs> serious harm, and it is not possible to say for how long that will be so. Accordingly, I order that you will be subject to the special restrictions set out in Section 41 of the Mental, Act, Mental Health Act 1983. You may take him down. Calacane's mental health has been a key factor in this case. He was assessed by three expert psychiatrists, all of whom advised that his actions were influenced by a serious mental health condition namely paranoid schizophrenia. That condition had a significant impact on his actions 
and impaired his ability to exercise self-control. He believed his mind was being controlled by external influences and that his family was in danger if he didn't obey the voices in his head. Now, legally, that meant he was able to put forward a partial defence to murder and offer pleas to manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility and attempted murder. Our role, the role of the CPS, is to review all the evidence in a case which is what we did here. To proceed with any case to trial, having carefully considered all the admissible, reliable, credible evidence, we must be satisfied that there remains a realistic prospect of conviction. That is the test we must apply. When we received the further evidence in the form of the reports from expert psychiatrists, we reached the conclusion there was no longer a realistic prospect of conviction for murder, but there was for manslaughter and attempted murder. That is why we accepted the pleas. Callaghan has now been held criminally responsible for these brutal, senseless acts of violence. Once again, my heart goes out to the families and the loved ones of Grace, Barnaby and Ian for this tragedy and to the surviving victims for the ordeal that Callaghan has put them through.